Hello and welcome. My name is Victor Gijspers and I teach philosophy at Leiden University in the Netherlands. In this video, I want to talk about the philosophical concept of incommensurability, especially as we meet it in the philosophy of Thomas Kuhn. Now, what is more, a centimeter or an inch? Well, the answer is an inch. What is more, a centimeter or a kilogram? Well, there the answer is not a centimeter is more than a kilogram, and it's also not a kilogram is more than a centimeter. The answer is a bemused shrug. Because there is no way in which you can compare the size of a centimeter to the size of a kilogram. One is a length, the other is a weight. And so in situations like these, when questions about more or less don't make sense, because the two things that we are trying to compare just cannot be measured in the same way, cannot be measured according to the same standards, in those situations we speak of incommensurability, which is a term that really just means not together measurableness, right? They're not measurable together because they belong to different realms of things, right? They have, they require different standards if you want to measure them. You can't apply the same standard of measurements to both things. So an inch and a kilogram are incommensurable. Now that is not exactly the way that the term incommensurable is used by the philosopher Thomas Kuhn, of course. And so in the rest of this video, I want to look at the specifically philosophical use of this word. Kuhn was a philosopher and historian of science. And when Kuhn talks about incommensurability, what he is talking about is something that has to do with scientific paradigms. Now for Kuhn, a scientific paradigm is, one could say, a way of doing science that is dominant in a particular scientific field. And such a paradigm would involve a lot of things. It would involve certain theories that all the scientists in that field take for granted, but also measuring instruments, particular ways of asking scientific questions or setting up research or even communicating research. And among the things that define a paradigm are certain standards. Certain standards of what counts as good and what counts as bad science. Now, according to Kuhn, different scientific fields, so for instance, particle physics and marine biology, have different paradigms, but also in the course of history, paradigms change or shift. And so particle physics might have one paradigm today, but it may have had a different paradigm in the past and might have yet another paradigm in the future. So, when paradigms change in this way, right, when in one particular field we move from one paradigm, one way of doing science, to another way of doing science, according to Kuhn, it is not just that certain theories change or that certain instruments that are being used change. No, the very standards of what scientists think is good science and bad science change as well. And that is where this idea of incommensurability comes in. Because suppose that we now look at two of these paradigms, like from a historical perspective, say, we look back at the history of science and maybe we see our, our current paradigm and the paradigm that came before it. And we ask the question, well, which of these two paradigms is better? Right now we're trying to compare them. Which of these two paradigms is better? Well, Kuhn says, according to what standards, right? If both of these paradigms have their own standards and are built around their own standards, then what is usually going to be the case is that the new paradigm looks better if we apply the standards of the new paradigm and the old paradigm looks better if we apply the standards of the old paradigm. And maybe what we would like to say, especially if we are historians of science, what we'd like to say is that the only really serious way of talking about the scientific activities in a paradigm is by talking about them using the standards that those scientists at that time in that paradigm used themselves. And if that's the way that we want to think about this, then what we might also want to say is that we should assess 
the science of the old paradigm using the standards of the old paradigm, and we should assess the science of the new paradigm using the standards of the new paradigm. And if we do that, then clearly, when we talk about scientific quality uh, of these two paradigms, they can't be measured in the same way, right? There are different standards at work in the old paradigm than the new paradigm. And so what we would have is a situation of incommensurability, right? Not together measurableness. These two paradigms can't be compared or can't be measured using the same standard of scientific quality, at least not without begging all kinds of questions. And so the correct thing to say here, according to Kuhn, is that they are simply incommensurable, right? You can't really ask the question which paradigm is better in the same way that you can't ask the question, what is more, a centimeter or a kilogram? Is this controversial? Well, I suppose it is maybe a little bit controversial to claim that historically speaking, the standards of science change, but not very controversial, right? If you look at the history of science, if you look at the way that scientists think about science, well, there are some values and maybe some standards that seem kind of continuous throughout history, but there are also lots of changes. So it's not, I think, very, um, uh, a very huge claim or a claim that's very hard to argue for to claim that standards of science do change over time. It is a more controversial claim to claim that there is no ahistorical standard for what good science is, right? Because that is something that Kuhn is presupposing here. He is presupposing that there are no ahistorical standards that we can use to assess the goodness of science. And certainly not all philosophers believe that, and there have been many philosophers who have tried to write down an ahistorical standard of what good science is, maybe by explaining to us the logic of inductive inference or talking uh, to us about, you know, uh, how we should reason with probabilities, how we should assess and use empirical evidence, and so on. Furthermore, if I am committed to contemporary science, then it seems that I am necessarily also committed to the idea that the standards of contemporary science are, are right, or at least better than any other standards we have, including all of those from the past. So it's certainly possible to resist Kuhn's claim that these scientific paradigms are um, incommensurable if we are willing to claim that there is either some ahistorical standard of scientific goodness or if we are willing to claim that there is, is at least progress in history from worse standards to better standards, which are therefore, you know, the ones that we should use whenever we assess science, either current or historical. That said, Kuhn's claim about incommensurability is certainly not a crazy claim, and it's something that we should take very seriously when we think about the normative status of science. Right? It's really one of the core claims that one could make about scientific method that it is either historical or ahistorical. And Kuhn's notion of incommensurability is a way of framing and dramatizing maybe that question. Right? Asking whether paradigms are incommensurable or not is a way of asking about the ahistorical or historical nature of scientific standards. Okay. Having said all that, I should add that there is another way in which Kuhn and many of the followers of Kuhn, people who have been inspired by Kuhn, have used the term incommensurable, one that is much more controversial yet. And that is the idea, which we also find in Kuhn, that the scientific paradigms are not just incommensurable in the sense that they have different standards for scientific goodness but that they are also incommensurable in terms of semantics or meaning. And the idea would be that scientists talking in one paradigm and scientists talking in another paradigm are using different languages and indeed languages that differ to such an extent that they can't really even understand each other. So Kuhn likes to give these historical examples where one term is used in different paradigms. 
So, for instance, he might say the term mass is used by Newton and in Newtonian physics. It's also used by Einstein and by physicists working in relativity theory. But the meaning of mass has changed from like when we moved from Newtonian classical theory to general relativity, the meaning of mass fundamentally changed. And so although it may seem that these physicists are talking the same language, they're really not talking the same language, right? They're using what seems to be the same word, but it has a completely different meaning. And when these physicists talk in this way, they're going to misunderstand each other if they come into a conversation. Um, they don't understand what the other person is saying. They misinterpret each other, so they don't understand each other. And that makes it, in an even more fundamental way, impossible to compare these paradigms, right? So these paradigms are incommensurable in an even stronger sense. Namely, that if you're inside one paradigm, you talk in one way. If you're inside another paradigm, you talk in another way. Um, and there's no way to bring this together. Right? There's no way to sort of talk both languages at the same time. And so you can't even really understand maybe even or think about both of these paradigms at the same time. Right? And if that's impossible, then there's a really radical way in which we can't compare these paradigms because we can't inhabit both paradigms at the same time. We can't really understand both paradigms at the same time. So that's, I suppose, the strongest sense in which we could understand this semantic incommensurability of Kuhn, this incommensurability of meaning. Uh, but this idea seems to be there in Kuhn, and it's certainly the way that it's been taken up by certain other authors. How believable is it that there is this type of incommensurability? And here I think we should be extremely skeptical. Right? And one reason to be skeptical is that, well, you know, the very possibility of comparing Newton's mechanics and Einstein's general relativity and saying, oh, look, they use the term mass in different ways. Namely, Newton uses it in this way and Einstein uses it in this way, seems to suggest that we have no trouble understanding both of these languages. Uh, and it would also seem to be very possible for a scientist in one language to talk to a scientist using the other language and they can then explain to each other what they mean. Right? I mean, there seems to be no fundamental barrier between them. Of course, it is possible and maybe even likely that in practice, scientists in different paradigms are going to have misunderstandings. Right? I mean, if you use terms in different ways, then it's going to happen a lot of the time that you talk past each other or don't understand each other. But that's more of a practical problem. Right? I mean, there doesn't seem to be any kind of fundamental reason to believe that these scientists couldn't understand each other's language or couldn't explain to the other person what we mean. And surely a lot of what we do in sort of more fundamental conversations, both in science and in philosophy, is trying to, to reach this level of understanding, right? Where we notice that maybe we're using terms in different ways, we're thinking about things in different ways. Okay, let's try to get to the point where we understand each other. And that usually seems to be maybe not easy, but surely possible. There's a famous article by Donald Davidson called On the Very Idea of a Conceptual Scheme, uh, in which he argues that this semantic idea of incommensurability doesn't really make any sense. Right? And his very abstract idea is the following. He says, look, I mean, suppose that you meet somebody who is making noises, right? making noises that remind you of language. Well, there's two possibilities. right? Either you manage to understand what they're saying at least to a fairly large extent, you manage to make sense of what they, you know, of the sounds that they make. And then you could say, oh yeah, it's a language and we've got good reasons to believe that this means that and so on. Or you fail, right? You fail to make sense of the, the noises, the sounds that are coming out of their mouths, uh, in which case you don't seem to have any reason to believe that it's language at all. If we apply that to something like Kuhnian paradigms, well, if we have good reason to believe that these people in different, in, in like earlier paradigms were doing science, right? If we can recognize what they were doing as science, if we can understand what they were saying, if we can see what theories they had and so on, well, that seems to presuppose that there is nothing like a kind of radical incommensurability here. Of course, any historian 
And anybody who has delved into history, even to a very modest uh, amount, knows that it can be really hard to understand these people, right? People from an earlier period, just as it can be very hard to understand people from different fields or different cultures. It takes a lot of work and we often end up misunderstanding them. But there doesn't seem to be a sort of radical impossibility here. So the idea of this semantic incommensurability, the idea that since theories have completely different meanings, we couldn't even compare them to each other, that seems to be an idea that is very hard to defend. On the other hand, the maybe more moderate position, the idea of a normative incommensurability, right, where this paradigm and that paradigm come with different norms for what counts as good science, and so there is no question begging way of finding out which paradigm is the best. I'm not sure whether it's true, but it is certainly an interesting idea and one that merits discussion and maybe is defensible. And if you wanted to attack it, you would have to argue that there is some atemporal, ahistorical, universal standard of scientific goodness. That's not necessarily easy to do. So. That's what I want to say about incommensurability in the philosophy of Kuhn. Extremely brief recap. Basically, incommensurability just means that two things cannot be measured by the same standard. In the philosophy of Kuhn, it's applied to scientific paradigms. And I would say primarily, the idea is that scientific paradigms have their own standards of scientific goodness. And there's no non-question begging way to measure both of them and say which is scientifically better. More controversially, and I think less defensibly, there's a strand of thinking in Kuhn that says that paradigms are also semantically incommensurable. Like the meanings of the terms are so different that you can't understand one paradigm if you're in the other paradigm. That would seem to be a philosophical claim that is a lot harder to defend um, and give like really solid arguments for. Thank you for listening.